It's always a small town vet. Hey nerds, it's Michaela back again with another video. And this video is going to be sort of a continuation of a discussion that I started to have, I guess by myself, because no one was there to respond to me, in a recent video of mine. So about a week or maybe two, I don't know, ago, I posted a video in which I talked at length about my favorite romance novel, spoiler alert, it is Beauty and the Clockwork Beast by Nancy Campbell Allen. But in that video, I actually critiqued the book because it has a very bad title and a very bad cover, in my opinion. And that is upsetting to me. That is sad to me because the book is incredibly good. But if I had seen this book sitting on a shelf in a bookstore, I would not have picked it up because I have in me ideas about romance novels or chiclet or whatever you want to call it. And are those ideas good? No. Are they fair? No, but they are there. And because <laughs> books are both a time and a money investment, I am going to bypass things that don't look good. Flat out, I'm judging books by their covers and we all do it. And I don't actually think that's a bad thing. Like I said, we invest parts of ourselves in the books we read. And therefore we have to be judicious and critical about the choices we make for what we're reading. Even if we're not spending money on it, right? Even if we are just borrowing it from a friend or borrowing it from the library, that's still, you know, hours of our life that we're dedicating to this thing. And I don't want it to suck. So if I, a book looks like it's going to suck, I'm not going to pick it up. And so I just kind of wanted to have some fun today. And I'm going to be judging romance books by their covers. I want to start out with a disclaimer that I am not judging these books for their content because I have not read any of these books. I do not know if they are good or bad. I do not mean to be unkind toward these authors or the cover artists or the publishing companies. Like I get that there are uh, traditions or customs in particular in romance novel world, right in that world. I get that. But that doesn't mean there isn't some room for some change and maybe some better decisions. If you have read any of these books, like, feel free to love them. I don't care if you love them, like, have at it, you know? I also know that, like, I, ultimately this is kind of pointless. I mean, it's pointless for a number of reasons, but it's pointless because I believe that basically romance books are the only money generating genre in the publishing industry. Like, romance keeps books alive. Like, if romance novels were to go away or were to stop selling, the entire publishing industry would collapse. This is what I have come to understand and I'm sure that is true and like all power to them, right? Like romance novels are great and important but they look like shit. A lot of them look like shit and I think that we don't have to put up with that. Like I feel like it's okay to like have romance stories that don't look like garbage and maybe you don't think they look like garbage. I don't know. I think they look terrible. I care about aesthetics, not over everything else but like I want books to like have nice covers. This is what I'm doing. I am judging books by their covers. Uh, my best friend Stephanie has compiled for me five or six, I can't remember, covers of books. I think some of them she has actually uh, taken from her mom's own collection. I think some she got from the internet. So I'm going to see the cover of the book, which I will put on screen. And then I am just going to say my thoughts about it, uh, the title and the, the image. Uh, and anything that is uh, visible on the cover. There might be some roasting. There might be some that I love. I don't know. I don't know what I'm about to see. But after I make sort of like a prediction about what I think it's going to be about based on this cover, uh, I will scroll down and I will find the actual description of the book and see if I got it right. Like I said, this is meant to be just fun. You know, I am literally judging a book by its cover. I'm just trying to have some fun. Just trying to have a, have a little laugh at some probably going to be ridiculous book covers. I don't know what these books are like. I don't know if they're good. I have no idea. I'm not trying to tell you to buy or not buy this book. I'm just here for a laugh, folks. All right. I'm going to scoot over so I will be able to put the cover here. And I'm going to start with the first one. Let's open it up. Okay. Okay, there's a lot happening here. So this is Fast and Loose by Fern Michaels. I'm going to guess that for Michaels is probably a pseudonym, which is fine. Apparent, I'm going to guess that it's a part of a series called The Men of the Sisterhood. I don't know what that means. I'm a little confused by it. We have uh, a big, big strong man with a, with a fist 
and he's in front of a lot of, I'm going to guess he's in Vegas because I see the word slots and it just look, looks very like casino, like Las Vegas strip. I'm getting that kind of energy from it. Listen, is this great? No. It also looks like this is a, a, a bit of an older book is going to be my guess. I don't have access to any kind of date. The, the tie is interesting. Why does it look like it have a very strange texture? I don't enjoy the tie. <laughs> that jaw is like so specific. Like that is such like a specific jaw type for like male romantic leads. Like this guy's an asshole. You know that this guy, whoever he is, I'm assuming the love interest, you know he's a dick. Okay, it's called Fast and Loose. I'm getting Las Vegas vibes. So this is going to be about gambling. I'm guessing the protagonist is going to be um, I'm gonna say she, like, works in a casino, probably, maybe, oh, she's a dealer at a casino, and she's, like, working the blackjack table, and this guy, uh, you know, he shows up one day, you know, in enters a game of all, like, her regulars, and just, like, wipes the floor with him, and so everyone accuses him of counting cards, and, like, that's sort of the plot thing, is, like, is this guy a cheater? Is he a real gambler? And they, I don't know, there's some kind of also love story. I'm not good at predicting love stories, I am good at predicting plots. I'm not good at it as in, I think I'm right. I'm good at it as in, like, that's where my brain goes. I can, I can try to make a guess at a plot. I can't fucking try to make a guess at a romance. All right, so that's my guess. Oh, no, she put them the wrong way. Okay, hold on, hold on. I have to scroll past all of these until I get to the descriptions, fuck. So I've gotten to the back of the book. Here's the description. The Sisterhood, a group of women bound by friendship and a quest for justice. Now their male allies, the men of the Sisterhood, have formed a top secret organization of their own with the same goal of helping the helpless and righting the wrongs of the world. Okay. With the women <laughs> of the Sisterhood away on a covert assignment, their significant others could be expected to kick back and enjoy a little drama-free downtime. But that's not the way Jack, Ted, Harry, Charles, and the rest of their comrades roll. Okay, so this is part of a series or like maybe a spin-off series from a different series, which is fine. It's going to make it hard to know if I'm right or not. An urgent call has come to the headquarters of their organization, Bolo Consultant. I'm sure Bolo is in reference to be on the lookout, like an APB, but like, I like to imagine that they're all just wearing Bolo ties. <laughs> Bert Navarro, head of security for Countess Anna de Silva. Isn't that the bitch from Get Out? Anna? That's Anna de Armas. Never mind. Suspects that Annie's Deluxe Casino, ha, Babylon, is being stealthily and expertly robbed, but figuring out who's hacking into Babylon's security system proves more difficult than expected, and may have implications for one of Bolo's own. The security expert working for them has unlocked one hard fact. There are more than enough suspects to investigate, but the men of Bolo will do what it takes to prove that even in Vegas, there's no gambling with justice. There is a chance that this is actually not a romance novel. <laughs> Wait, I'm just now reading the top of this. From number one New York Times bestselling author friend Michaels comes a new action-packed novel. I don't think this is a romance novel. Okay, fine. You know what? This is a learning opportunity. Because it's not just romance novels that have shitty covers. Apparently it's action novels too. To be honest, I low-key don't hate my plot idea of like a possibly cheating gambler and a Las Vegas dealer. I don't hate this. But we're moving on. <laughs> because this is already off to a great start. Next up. The, okay, this one's definitely romance. This is And Then He Kissed Me by Patty Berg. This cover is extremely like mid to late 2000s, right? I don't know when this came out, but like I'm feeling very 2007. Um, it has that color scheme. It has that aesthetic, you know, mixed fonts, the little flap thing. I That's just what I'm getting from this. One thing, I don't think this sucks, right? It's fine. It absolutely tells me nothing at all about the book, right? I would ha I have to read the back of this to even formulate the smallest guess as to what this might be about. I've got a tube of lipstick, either a garter or a hair scrunchie, not sure, and an engagement ring. I mean, garter would make sense, engagement ring. But I, I, I can't figure out what this is about at all. So, I mean, I guess it sucks in that regard. Like, I guess the only thing you have to communicate from your cover is like what type of book it is. And I guess this communicates that, yeah, this is a romance. I can tell that from the title, which I don't love and then he kissed me you have it's a very generic title and it's a very generic cover i feel like one of them needs to give me a little something more but it's not like god awful so all right scrolling down all right here's the back of the book she's a blonde bombshell who once starred in a string of low budget films and is now a jet setting best-selling author but one too many bites of caviar menacing phone calls from her jailbird ex a tabloid ph photographer hot on her heels and a nasty gossip about her life sent juliet over the edge disguising her identity she runs straight into the arms of cole sheridan a small town vet it's 
always a small town vet with troubles of his own. With a malpractice suit hanging over his head and his bohemian parents and their band of old hippie friends about to converge on his home, the last thing Cole needs is one more snag in his orderly life. But when he spots the raven-haired beauty with the curvaceous body standing along a lonely stretch of highway, he hitches her car to his own and tows one more complication his way. He thinks she's quirky, she thinks he's sexy but cantankerous. She's hiding something. He wants to push everyone away until the chaos of Juliet's life catches up with her in plentiful Wyoming. Once she's more, once more she's ready to run, and then Cole kisses her. That's when the trouble really begins. So there's a lot of tropes happening here, right? We've got, you know, the chaotic woman and the orderly man. It is usually the other way around, but it's still like that same dynamic. He thinks she's quirky. Do you need any more evidence that this is the 2000s? You know, it's it's very what to be expected. The only thing that kind of makes me upset is that, like, this doesn't seem like an uninteresting plot. Like, there seems to be a lot going on. Like, yes, the romance is obviously the biggest part of this, but, like, I absolutely want to know about this jail jailbird ex. I want to know about this guy's hippie family. Like, there are parts of this that aren't specifically romance related that I want to know more about, but none of this is on the front cover. None of this, like, kind of interesting, engaging stuff is on the cover. It's just, like, I see lipstick and engagement ring and some other scrunchy garter situation. And as someone who like, I consider myself feminine, but not like hyper feminine, I would see that and be like, this looks cringe. Like it looks like, oh, this is for like, not me, right? I would look at the cover and think like this is not for me. And I don't necessarily think reading this description that this book is not for me. But I would again, look at this cover and be like, eh. Okay, wait, I like this one. There is unfortunately a Target sticker, but it looks like the title is Love at First Like by Hannah Orenstein. Hate the title. Title is garbage, but I enjoy the cover quite a lot. The title is How Far Would You Go to Fake the Perfect Life? So I'm getting like a fake lovers to real lovers scenario, like on board. I, I like the color. I like the art style. I think between the I mean, the title is whatever, but I think between the cover and that that tag, or what's it called? Like, like it's, it's a tag, tagline, tagline. And the tagline, I think I have a, a, I know what, I know what I'm about to pick up, right? This is, or at least I think I do. Some kind of fake lovers to real lovers, some kind of faking an online relationship, either faking it with a real person or faking it with a fake person. Either one is interesting, you know? And then a, hopefully like some kind of like real love ensues. I I like this cover. I think this is a good one. It does feel more modern. It feels a bit more like mid 2010s. I'm gonna guess like 2014, 2015. It feels like around there, but it definitely looks more interesting. Eliza Roth and her sister Sophie co-own a jewelry shop in Brooklyn. One night after learning of an ex's engagement, Eliza accidentally posts a photo of herself wearing a diamond ring on that finger to her Instagram account. Uh, beloved by 100,000 followers, sales skyrocket, press rolls in, and Eliza learns that her personal life is good for business. So instead of clearing up the misunderstanding, Eliza decides to continue the ruse and sets out to find a fake fiance. Fellow entrepreneur Blake seems like the perfect match on paper, and in real life he shows promise too. He would be perfect if only Eliza didn't feel so drawn to someone else. But Blake doesn't know about Eliza's scheme, and the landlord the landlord hangs up the rent on the shop. Oh, okay, I missed the shop. Okay. And Eliza's lies start to spiral out of control. Eliza has a choice. She can either stay engaged online or fall or fall in love in real life. Uh, again, called it fake relationship with a real person, but like it's going to be a fake lovers to real lovers. Totally on board. I got this from the from the cover. I didn't need to read the back. Again, I'm not saying this is a, like I'm opposed to reading the back of the books. I think people should read the back or inside cover if it's like hardcover or whatever. People should read the description of a book before they pick it up. But it's a good cover. It conveys what the book is about. It isn't terrible to look at. It's 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 good. I like it. This this I mean this book seems like the plot of it seems like something I would have read like a thousand times before or seen in movies a thousand times before. So, I mean, I don't really know, again, if the book is good, but I don't think the cover sucks. And that's a change of pace. Oh my God. Ah! Why? Is that Ian Somerhalder? Tell me that's not Ian Somerhalder on this. What's happening? Mad, Bad, and Dangerous and Plaid by Susan Enoch. I, I don't want to keep looking at this. I have never been less heterosexual than I am in this moment. First of all, that is Ian Somerhalder. Damon Salvatore is on the cover of this book. Second, like, this looks so awful. The title is bad. The title is bad. It's, dare I say, mad, bad, and dangerous and bad. And the cover is just like, I, I, I would never want to be seen with this because it's so awful. Like, it's not that I care about 
being seen reading a bodice ripping romance it's that like this looks like a hell a, a scandalous highlanders novel this isn't no highlanders and outlanders is different what is there to say i'm guessing some kind of like royalty nobility meets scottish highlander like i don't what prediction do you have to make about this like i don't i don't know what the plot's going to be there is i'm there is no plot this this feels like a pwp okay let's what is this about uh she used to be mad about him and mad bad and dangerous and plaid by new york times bestselling author susan enoch suzanne enoch high-spirited Ro rowena mclaury has come to the highlands after a spectacularly successful debut season in london and has made it painfully clear that she's outgrown her girlhood obsession with lachlan mcteer that's just right with him as he never had any intention of marrying the last anyway yet how can he ignore the fact that the once rough and tumble winnie has become a very fashionable and incredibly desirable young woman and now he's got it bad brawny rugged lachlan is nothing like the aristocratic English gentleman who pursued Winnie with a passion in London. Three months away was more than enough to show her a world infinitely more glamorous than the untamed Scottish Highlands and her beloved childhood crush. But now that she's decided to find a prospective husband with a bit more polish, could Lachlan finally appreciate her charms? And is it remotely possible to ignore that the wild attraction she feels for him? I'm gonna be honest, I tuned out of that while I was reading it. This sounds incredibly boring. I don't care about this at all. But like the the cover looks boring, right? Like it's yes, it is wild, but it's like wild and boring at the same time. And like I kind of get that same vibe from the descript description. That cover is so bad. And I get that this book again is probably older and I don't know or if a book would be given that cover today. I have aphantasia. I can't see things in my mind and yet that image will be burned into my mind for the rest of the time. That cover cured me of my aphantasia. That's how fucking insane it is. All right, there's two more. Stop it. <laughs> okay, this <laughs> Stop. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, so this next book was absolutely <laughs> absolutely chosen with me in mind <laughs> it is called hedging his bets by celia kyle and mina carter i'm going to guess that this is actually a parody book i'm going to guess that this is not real judging by the size like it's a square image so like i'm thinking this is like an ebook if i swear to god if this man if i find out if i read the description of this book and i find out that this man turns into a hedgehog i am deleting my channel like <laughs> this is so funny this is the funniest thing I actually, I actually, I want this. I want this as ball art. This is the funniest thing I think I've ever seen in my life. My best friend knows that I love hedgehogs. Hedgehogs are like my thing. I love them. It is my patronus. It is my everything. I love hedgehogs. So I know why this was chosen. I just have to go. I have to, I have to read it. I have to know. It's a BBW paranormal shapeshifter romance. I was right. I don't know what BBW mean. I'm scared to look it up. Oh, big, beautiful women. A euphemism described thicker curvy women okay i mean the woman on the cover i have to go back and look but she did not i mean it's hard to tell i would not call her big okay honey loves running her bar and grill and ca catering to humans and shifters alike but there are two things that dim her love of the place cocky assholes who think they own the world and cocky assholes who think they can flex their muscles and wreck her wreck her bar when throwing a temper tantrum unfortunately the drop dead gorgeous hotter than hot shifter man she secretly loves is both blake wasn't the last one blake wasn't there a blake blake previously there was Blake was the name of the guy from the, the fake Lovers to Real Lovers one. Blake wants a curvaceous, gorgeous honey in his bed. Now, he's lusted but not loved, let's get that straight, after the luscious woman for months. True, he looks like a bad boy biker mixed with a player, and yeah, he's broken a few things in her bar, but only because the guys were hitting on her, his girl. With no hope of winning her over in sight, he does what any red-blooded were-hedgehog would do in his position. He lies. I just read the words were-hedgehog with mine own two eyes. I have strayed so far from the Lord's path. This has to be, this has to be Wattpad. I, I refuse to believe this is anything but Wattpad. You know what? I don't think I have anything else to say about this. I think we're going to move on and we're all going to pretend that that didn't happen. All right, this is the very last one because I need, need to be saved. I mean, this one has NASCAR branding on it. Crossing the Line by Jean Brasher. Anne Brashares wrote the Traveling Sister Pants Hood. You know what I'm talking about. Again, this is like very stereotypical for, I think, for a romance cover. The NASCAR branding means that like, I don't know if it's a matter of like Harlequin had to license the right to use NASCAR or if NASCAR paid for this to be written. Some money was exchanged for this though. This Okay, so the tagline for this is the secrets out. So is this, is this guy like a secret 
NASCAR driver or maybe she is a secret NASCAR driver and she's been like posing as a man this whole time to like get behind the wheel and he finds out and so he has to keep her secret and like maybe that's the romantic tension. I mean again the cover is awful. What she's wearing is like so 2009. It's wild. Again this is just like it's so it's a terrible cover. It looks so bad. I would not want to be seen reading this. I don't even want to like I would not want to look at this. Like honestly forget being seen reading this. I just like wouldn't want this on my shelf. It looks like hell. The colors are bad. It's very like cringy. He's like opening his suit like it's fucking Superman. Like it just looks so bad. All right, last one. Description. Let's go. Grace Winters is the racing world's best kept secret. Now the secret's out. The up and coming chef hopes her newfound celebrity as author of a NASCAR themed cookbook. There's so many things happening in these first three sentences will give her the financial security she craves. Falling for handsome, much too charming playboy Garrett Clark is just a recipe for disaster. The only home Garrett knows, Garrett knows is behind the wheel of a race car, and now he's on track to win a coveted championship. Falling for a hardworking mother of three isn't part of his freewheeling bachelor plans, but how is he supposed to resist the tempting package Grace is offering? A home, a family, the whole nine yards. That's before a shocking re revelation stuns the NASCAR world and promises to transform Garrett's and Grace's life forever. First of all, Please, romance writers, stop making your male and female romance interest. Can you say a sentence? Stop making your male and female romantic interests have the same first initial. I don't care if they are different genders or different whatever. I don't care. It is confusing and I will never keep them straight. Obviously, I did not guess from the cover that she was a chef. Like that did not come across. Not that I think it had to, right? I got enough that he is a race car driver and like for the female audience like that is supposed to be the draw that they are reading a romance novel with a nascar driver that's fine i'm a touch confused by the plot an up-and-coming chef hopes her newfound celebrity as the author of a nascar themed cookbook pray tell what that means what are your recipes are they foods that like nascar drivers would eat because like nascar drivers tend to lose a lot of weight in the cars because the cars are so hot that like sweat out so much so maybe it's like very hydrating foods or foods that help them bulk up or is it foods that are just like car themed so like that one dude drives an m&m car so is there like m&m thing what do you do for the dupont car i'm confused i'm confused by this cookbook and honestly that's what i want to read about i want to read about what you do to create a nascar themed cookbook i don't really give a shit about the relationship i want to know about the food i mean to me this seems like a terrible plot but that goes along with a terrible cover this one i would pass and i think i would be right to pass i mean if you've read this let me know if i'm wrong okay so those are the six covers we looked at i mean technically it was only five romance covers because it turns out that that first one was not a romance book my favorite one by far was the love at first like i think this one is just really good i'm looking at it again it's really good it conveys what it needs to convey without being like cringeworthy i feel like it, it's clear that you're reading a romance right like if if you were to read this on the train no one would not know that you're reading a romance but it doesn't feel icky it doesn't feel weird it just feels like this is a book about a romance and that's it and i like that my favorite for personal reasons is hedging his bets but we don't have to go into that uh the worst by far is mad bad and dangerous and plaid it is the most traditional it is the most like customary for what i think of when i think of a terrible romance novel but holy shit what is happening there's so much fabric how could there be that much fabric in her dress okay i have to stop now my takeaway from this is just romance covers don't have to be bad they can convey the fact that this is a romance and that maybe there's even a plot involved they can convey that without being awful i feel like we demand a lot less from romance covers and I think this is actually true for like adult romance or YA romance because the expectation is like these are like trashy books anyway so who cares if they look trashy and, and I feel like that attitude carries over into like the attitudes about the books as a whole right I love calling certain things trashy right like I have watched Bridgerton twice now and I talk about like oh my god it's such a trash show and I'm a trash person but like I love the show and I think it's a good show and what I really like about Bridgerton is that like I feel like the creators of the show, like everybody involved in that show, treats it with respect. I love the opening sequence. I love the the way it looks on Netflix. I love, you know, all of the effort that clearly went into those costumes and the music. I, like 
I think it's a great show. I think it's like in terms of being it will it being well made. Obviously, it's problematic. The Bridgerton story is problematic. I also I'm, I'm commenting on the show because I have not read the books. But that is a trashy show that doesn't look trashy. That doesn't treat its story as trashy. And therefore, like it feels better when I watch it. Whereas like if I were to read these books, like I would feel gross and icky reading them because it looks gross and icky. Okay, like I said I was going to be done and now I am actually done. Let me know what you think about any of these covers, what your favorite is or least favorite or the one that made you want to fling yourself into the sun, whatever. And let me know what you think about romance titles. Like, do you think I am t entirely out of pocket here? Like, do you think that romance covers are fine and that I'm being a sensitive little piss baby? Like, I don't care. Let me know if that's what you think, truly. That is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Okay, bye.